excited to share God's word to you. I was I was supposed to be here last last week but probably God wanted us to have a vacation from our vacation. <laughs> See Mommy Sheila had COVID and I praise the Lord no uh, and uh, we're all well don't worry green pass. <laughs> Let's give the Lord a clap offering for that. <laughs> Let me ask you this question once again. Dami ko tanong, ano? <laughs> if, <laughs> if all of my church members is just like me, what will, be, what will my church look like? Oh, think about that. If all of us here is like you, what will our church look like? Amen? Oh, praise the Lord. Oh, kito mo. Sana all. <laughs> this is very important, you know. We are in the last days now. We are in the series entitled, We Are Called, We Are Chosen. Tell your seatmate that. You are called. You are chosen. And we're talking about the churches in the last days. The churches in the last days. In 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 17, you see, God expects so much from us, His children. But He expects more from His church family. See, in, in, in 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 17, can we all read them together? Para makafocus tayo, no? For it is... Yeah, for it is time for judgment to begin with the yun. And if it begins with us, what will the outcome be for those who do not obey the gospel of God? You see, this is the, Peter described what a church is. A church is not a building. It's not a, it is not a doctrine. It is Jesus Christ. It is a family because, because of Jesus Christ, we become a child of God. Amen. And as a child of God, He did not leave us orphans. You know, He, he organized churches, church families just like, just, just like us. So that we may come to know Him, experience Him, grow in spiritual maturity, and grow in emotional maturity. See, God, God's judgment will start with the church. Wow. With the church family. His judgment will start with the church family. The last verse is such a convicting verse. He says there, What will the outcome be for those who do not obey the gospel of God? As if God is telling, as if Peter is telling him, Hey, there's so many things, so, so many the people out there who do not hear, know the, not, the, the gospel of God, who do not know Jesus Christ. What will you do about them? Amen? Did you see that? Peter is saying, Hey, there's so many, so many who haven't heard the gospel, haven't heard about Jesus Christ. What will you do about them as a church family? I want to share with you my heart with you today as we now enter, uh, we are entering a more challenging season. Gasoline has just increased, do you know that? Here, <laughs> in the UAE, you know? Hindi na masarap ang spaghetti sa Pilipinas, mahal lang sibuyas. <laughs> life now is hard life now is hard and as we see it it is not going to get better all the signs that Jesus Christ described in Matthew 24 are already in our doorsteps and it is an, in, in, in an ever increasing measure the end is near and so I face the final. <laughs> it is here. It is in our doorstep. But how, as a church family, how do we respond to this? How do we respond to this? All the signs. And even as we are a 
we are children of God, we will all be strongly affected and challenged by these events. Even though if we are a child of God, we are children of God, we will be affected by this turn of events, by this uh, events that has been unfolding before us. This is the reason why Jesus said, but the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. The one who stands firm to the end will be saved. I'm going to talk to you about that lengthily later. Even the Apostle Paul encouraged us to finish the race and keep the faith. Finish the race. Christianity is not, is not a sprint. I received Jesus' name. I'm okay. No. Christianity is a journey. It is a marathon. Amen. Until we enter that heavenly gate and win the prize. And the writer of Hebrews exhorted us to run with perseverance. No matter what, uh, no matter what the, the distractions are. No, what, no matter what the world brings, gives to us, persevere, hang on, finish the race marked out for us. Are you with me? But buti na lang, it's good. Good news is that we are children of God. Pwede palakpakan yun. Right? We are children of God. We have a God who knows us, who sees us, who knows what we need, who knows how to protect and provide for us. We have a God who will never leave us and will never forsake us. Amen. Daming may rayo sa inyo. Ulitin nga natin yun. Kaya naman kay Lord eh. Hindi ba? But God calls us to be alert. God calls us to be alert, to be ready, to be prepared, church. For the hour is near. The time is at hand. Gone are the days of mediocrity and lukewarmness. You lukewarm service and relationship with God. You when we serve out of our emotions. If we are blessed, we serve with all of our strength. If, if the blessings are not with us, then we become lukewarm. Christianity, serving God, is not, the, is not the doing, it is the being. Amen. Christianity is not the doing, but it is the being. You know, you enjoy, as a child of God, you enjoy, you be a child of God, serving your Father in heaven. Because if you do what you do, because you just have to do it later on, you will be burned out, right? There will no, no longer be joy in our hearts. So when you serve, say mo sa katabi mo, ka mareklamo. Right? When you serve. Now, in as much as God expects much from His sons and daughters, He expects much more from His church family. Now, in that island of Patmos, God spoke to, to uh, John the Beloved. The Beloved, no? The Beloved John. John is one of the disciples. He was the only one who was not killed, who was not martyred. But he was exiled in that sad island called Patmos. And God entrusted to him the book of Revelation, things to come. We call it eschatology. You know, the things to come. Now every church has the opportunity to be the light in this darkened world. Now we have the opportunity to be the light in this dark world. The church do not create the light. We reflect the light. Because Jesus is the light. Amen. That's why, you see, evangelism is not just going to somebody and then, I'd like to share to you my testimony. You need Jesus Christ. The first way, the, the first effective way to evangelize is that when light exudes from you, the light is reflected no, from you. It is your deed. It is your words that comes out. You know, it's the matter of your heart and your thoughts. That is the first way to evangelize. People will take notice of you. Are you with me? Evangelism is not difficult if you, if you live a life just like what Jesus, just how Jesus Christ wants us to live. If you walk like Jesus walked 
Evangelism is not difficult. In fact, if you are so much in love with Jesus Christ, out of the abundance of your heart, your mouth shall speak. Automatic yun. Now, for the past four weeks now, the Holy Spirit spoke to us about four of the churches out of the seven churches. It was prophesied through John the Beloved. And for the past, past four, four weeks, we spoke about the church in Ephesus, in Smyrna, in Pergamum, and Thyatira. Today, uh, let me just share with you some of the uh, important messages that Jesus Christ would like to extend to us. Remember these seven churches, they, they are in, the, in Asia Minor. You know, they're, they're very near each other, no? They're very near each other, Asia Minor. You know, they got, Jesus Christ taught this, spoke and, and prophesied to these churches. Why? Because He knew that this church will respond. And when this church responds, they will go out and touch other churches like it is touching our church now. Amen? He said in Ephesians, He says, go back to your first love. Continue to do your good deeds and hard work, perseverance, rejection of false prophets, but do it for Christ's sake. Make Jesus popular, not your church, not the prison worship teams, not the songs, not the pastors. Jesus Christ had good words with, with the, the church in Ephesus, but this is what he says. You are doing these things not because of me, it's because of you. I can just imagine this in the last days in the white throne judgment when their names are being blotted out. You know, these pastors will say, but Jesus, I, I, pre I preach for you. I casted out demons in your name. And there's this, this worship leaders and the, this, this worship leaders and those who compose worship songs. Jesus, I wrote many gospel songs and it was a hit in the Philippines and not in the Philippines, in the world. In fact, one of the songs was sung by Chriselle. <laughs> and Jesus Christ will say, you know what will he will say? Go away. I do not know you. No? You missed the more important thing, which is to seek and obey. He says you did it for yourself. You were popular. The church was popular. The praise and worship team was popular. But I was not there. Amen. So any, everything that we do now, church, it's not because of our church, but it's all because of Jesus Christ. Amen. In the church of Smyrna, he says they remain faithful. Smyrna was a faithful church. And he says, he warned us this. He warned us that there will be persecutions and strong temptations coming our way. Be steadfast and stand firm. He says, stand firm, stand strong, and stand up for Jesus. Amen? Stand firm. Say it with me. Stand firm. Stand strong. And stand up for Jesus. Remain faithful. Temptations will abound. The, Satan would like to win you back. Satan wants to shame Jesus. Because every time you fall into temptation, we shame Jesus. We put a tear in Jesus' eyes. Jesus Christ cries, not because we disobeyed, because Jesus knew that when we fall to sin, we hurt ourselves. Amen? Next is Pergamum. He says that do not compromise. Do not use grace as a license to sin. The Lord God calls on the church to repent or risk the judgment. This church, that the, 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 how are we going to, 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 to be judged? Through the word of Jesus Christ, the sword of his mouth. We will be judged through the sword of his mouth, which is the word of Jesus Christ. That's why if you were able to finish the 21 day of fasting, I'm sure you were blessed by the Ten Commandments. Amen? Now, if you have not tried it, you can again try it again. No? You can try it. No, uh, we, have, we have the, the lists of readings and how to go about the
day, day of fasting. The reason why we want it 21 days, not 20, or not 18 or 3 days. Because, you know, if you come to, to speak to, to, to Jesus Christ every day, you will hunger for His Word, for His presence. After 21 days, you would want more. Right? Jesus Christ will be not, not only your God, but, you know, He will be the bestest of friends that you can ever have. You know, excited ka sa mga best BFF mo makausap, every day, sit at the foot of Jesus. That's, you know, that, that's how to prepare. Do not compromise. No? Do not compromise. And do not use. If you use grace as a license to sin, you do not know really Jesus Christ. You always use, you know, you know that Jesus Christ is a God of love. But this, though this is true, but this is not all true because he is also a God of wrath, a God of justice. He is a rewarder of the faithful, but he, punishes, he judges those who are unfaithful. In the book, in, in the church of Thyatira, he says there, be aware of deceptive teachings. There's so many televangelists right now. Be careful what they preach. Be careful what you watch. That's why I always tell you, don't just hear, listen to what I tell you. Read your Bible. Check it out if what I'm saying here is right. It is, it, it's in context with the Bible. Be aware of deceptive teachings. Compromise is the deep secret and weapon of Satan. Let us not compromise a holy life for temporary pleasures. Especially in the area of sexual immorality. Are you with me? Still. Amen. Be careful. Do not compromise. If the church doesn't think, teach about sin, about repentance, no, if that televangelist always teaches you about, uh, about prosperity, how to feel good, there are so many, many, many televangelists, they are motivational speakers. They use their thoughts and they use scripture to prove their thoughts. That must not be the case. You see, use scripture to prove God's heart and to show us God's thoughts. Today, we're going to talk about the fifth church, Sardis. Wake up or be blotted out. Ano kaya ibig sabihin ng blotted out, no? Our anchor verse will come from our reading, Revelation chapter 3, verse 5. Can we all read them together? The one who is victorious will like them be dressed in white. I will never blot out the name of that person from the book of life, but will acknowledge that name before my Father and His angels. Father, check my heart, Lord God, as I preach your word today, Lord God. Let this be pure words that come from your heart, Lord God, to change hearts and renew minds in Jesus' name. Revelation chapter 3, verse 1 to 6 talks about this church named Sardis. Verse 1, to the angel of the church in Sardis write, These are the words of him who holds the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know your deeds. You have a reputation of being alive, but you are dead. Naku, walking dead, zombie. Wake up! Strengthen that what remains and is about to die, for I have found your deeds unfinished in the sight of, the, of God. You see, Sardis was a city that had endured, you know, it, 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 it is in a high ground, in a valley. And it is fortified with walls. No army can penetrate that. For many years, they lived peacefully. Because no army can attack them. They were, so, they were so high there that no army can penetrate that fortification. But it has endured two surprise attacks despite its fortification. It lost. It was conquered by four nations. In spite of it, it's being high there, up there. Forty feet, fortified war. They were conquered four times. You know why? Tulug, tulug sila eh. They were so comfortable with what they have. 
Now, our Lord faults the church of Sardis for maintaining an outward appearance of being alive while actually being spiritually dead. Now, our walk with God, uh, he, Jesus Christ would, would like to, uh, uh, would like to give that example. Sardis was so high there, they were so, they were so comfortable, but they, but they started to be complacent started to be complacent they slept kinimen ko tayo baka natutulog yan okay please lift up your right hand okay all right let's do this do this yan ha ilagay mo yan sa katabi mo mm. sige ilagay mo lagay mo lagay mo ganun kurutin mo yan kurutin mo mag <laughs> bakit Alam mo, <laughs> alam, yeah, I know that you're tired, you know. But do, do you know that? Do you know why you cannot buy, read the Bible well? Because every time you read the Bible, what do you experience? You feel asleep. Right? You know why? Because Satan sings to you a lullaby. Hmm, sleep na, malalaman mo pa. <laughs> so this is very important, church. This is not only for, you know, this is for all of us. We need to work on this together. We have to be one in spirit. Listen to what God, Jesus Christ has to say. People, you know, those people in Sardis, they, they, they put their guard down. They were so complacent. Sobra, hindi na sila, they, hindi na sila, they did not uh, watch out until, you know what happened? One guy, one of the, one of the guards his, his helmet fell. Helmet fell. And this guard, you know what, you know, because it's so stiff, you know, this guard, they never use this, but this guard used a tunnel. They used a, he used a tunnel. Tamade. He was, he was lazy, you know. He did not go the, ro- the, 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 the long road, but he used the tunnel. That was a secret tunnel to, to get his helmet. And the enemy, and the enemy saw him. And that's when they were attacked. <laughs> okay? So mo sa katabi mo, huwag kang short shortcut. Huwag kang shortcut. Some of this, you know, they were alive while actually being spiritually dead. How do you do that? You're alive. You look like alive. Magnificent, glorious. You're know, crying, no? It's all about you. It's all about you. I forgot. I forgot. I It's all outside, nothing inside. Amen. All outside, nothing inside. Yung bang nakikinig ng message pero wala lang. Sino dito yung ganun, nakikinig ng message wala lang. Yung mga tumatawa sa, ah, bakit sila tumatawa? <laughs> <laughs> Parang holy pero huli naman ni Satan ang buhay. Those who live double life, a person of the word and the world, a person of the world, the word, the word, and the person of the world. You know, when you walk in, in on earth, you you are holding hands with Jesus and with Satan. That is not right. Choose one to walk with. This is a church who is doing nothing wrong, but they are also doing nothing. <laughs> it is a mediocre church, a church that is dying. No VIPs, no new souls. Every time they bring a VIP, Pastor, VIP, bala ka na dyan. I did my job, I brought somebody, so it's now your responsibility. Sabi mo sa katabi mo, Imbita mo, alaga mo. Amen. You know, the, 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 those who are, who are contented with church maintenance, may maintain lang ng church, 
Basta may umuupo sa mga upuan, okay na yan. Alam mo yun, yung nobody cares if there are so many vacant chairs. Look around you, there's so many vacant chairs. And you even sit at the same chair. As if you have a Torrance title with that chair. <laughs> a land title. God knows us. Church, please. I pray this year, those chairs will be filled of worshipers, true worshipers. Wake up. Let's wake up. Let's, let, let, let's, let, let's not be uh, consumers. Oh, maganda yun, maganda yun, maganda yun. Magbigay ka naman. Members will likewise live a mediocre life. To, uh, yung mga total, saved naman ako. Total, anyway, I'm already saved. Why make life difficult for me? Magpapakarak pa ako? Papakain pa ako? Sila na nga dinadala ko kay Lord. Ako pa gagastos? <laughs> I'm okay. Anyway, I'm safe. Do you know what that means? I call that prideful deception of self. Sobrang pride mo. Prideful. Sobrang pride that you deceive yourself. That it is just okay for you to be saved. You are saved because God wants to use you to save others. Yan. Buti pa si Sam, kumakalak pa kayo. Hindi. <laughs> Verse 3. Remember therefore what you have received and heard. Hold it fast and repent. But if you do not wake up, I will come like a thief and you will not know at what time I will come to you. Referring to the city's history of prior, of prior surprise attack, Jesus warns the congregation, all of us, to wake up and repent, lest He will come like a thief in the night. You know, when He comes, Jesus Christ is coming soon. You know, will you, will you uh, do this, no? Blink. This in the blink of an eye, in the twinkling of an eye. Just blink. Come on, everybody blink. I'm still here. But one day, in a twinkling of an eye, many of us will just disappear. Amen? And you will bring nothing with you except for the treasures that you already have invested in heaven. Amen. Amen. Sabi mo sa katabi mo, wag kang wag iiwan. Hindi ka sana maiwan. <laughs> You see, this church in Sardis, no, they were living, uh, this church in Sardis, they were living, they had a false sense of security. No? Built up on a citadel, on a high ground. Its walls were high and were fortified. They felt secure. So, so they thought. But they were attacked and defeated. Remember this, my friends. Remember this. The enemy who comes to kill, steal, and destroy. He is relentless to destroy you. He is not a friend. Satan is not a friend. He will give you temporary joy and yet put you under the, and throw you under the bus. He will kill you. He will give you temporary joy. But the pain will be everlasting. Stop living for yourself. Start living for Jesus and for others. Jesus Christ is telling this church, if you don't repent, repent of mediocre living, of lukewarm service, there will be severe judgment. You know? And what is, uh, God, God will use the Ten Commandments to judge us. Do you know that? And, but Jesus Christ modified this Ten Commandments. He says, not only to commit adultery, but if you watch pornography, you have committed adultery. Amen? Yeah. Be careful, especially of sexual immorality. If you are, you know, the word, our word today, you know, is so sharp. That I, would, I will not ask for forgiveness because the words for today the, about these churches are cutting. 
it will discomfort you. It's just like, you know, uh, you, you want to be cured with an antibiotic, you have to be, you have to experience pain first. No? Injection muna, and then you will be cured. Be careful. If you are living in today with a person that you, that's not your husband, your wife, stop it. Stop it. If you have opened a dating site or you have somebody who thought loves you abroad, stop it. You know, uh, I would like to share this with you because this is to warn everyone, huh? to warm everyone. No, there is uh, a, a, a woman who, who used to attend, who used to be part of our, uh, of our, uh, uh, the church, but, you know, suddenly just disappeared. Now she's having a problem. You know why? She's being blackmailed with thousands of dollars. And what did he, what, did, what, what happened to her? She, you know, went to Instagram met somebody in Instagram, you know, made love letters and love notes and messages in Instagram until they, they, became, they became boyfriend and girlfriends in Instagram. And then finally, they said you, they, they, they were now married in Instagram. <laughs> How crazy is that? And you know what happened? Because they're when the guy asked, can you give me a picture you are without any clothes. She did it. Why did you do it? I, said, I told her, why did you do it? To prove that, to prove, to prove that I, am, uh, uh, you know, I will not fool him. I am honest that I love him on Instagram. Be careful. You know, those who long for partners, don't look for it. Let them find you. Sabi mo nga sa katabi mo, you're beautiful. You're beautiful. You see? Don't. Come on. You're beautiful. Pray for it. You know, don't sell yourself on med social media. You know, magpagsasayo na gano'n. Paano yan? Hindi. <laughs> don't sell yourself. Because those who will buy you <laughs> will only want love you, will only like to watch you and your body. Sexual immorality is one of the most powerful weapon of Satan. Stop it. Amen. And when I ask about the name and where that guy lives, he said this in New York. And what's his name? His name is this one. And what's his surname? Uh, on Instagram. Be careful. Verse 4. He says, Yet you have a few people in Sardis. This is good. Yet you have a, a few people in Sardis who have not sold their clothes. They will walk with me dressed in white, for they are worthy. The one who is victorious will like them be dressed in white. I will never blot out. Say it with me, blot out. Yeah, another word for blot out is to erase. Right? Blot out their name, uh, the name of that person from the book of life. But will acknowledge that name before my father and his angels. Whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Those who will persevere, those who will stand strong, those who will finish the race. He said, I will not blot out their name in the Lamb's Book of Life. And when they come, he says here, I will acknowledge them. Angels, this is Lester. Huh? I'd like you to meet Lester, my son. Well done, Lester, my good and faithful servant. You see, he will acknowledge that name, that name before my father and his angels. Father, Jesus will say, I'm so proud of Lester. Hey, angels, this is the guy, he's the man. 
you know? Tapos papalakpak yung mga angels. Di ba? Lester, kunin mo akong picture. Video mo. <laughs> Biglang ganun. <laughs> Those in the church of Sardis who heed Christ's warning will be dressed in white, a symbol of purity and victory. Symbol of purity and victory. And will not be blotted out of the book of life. Will not be blotted out in the book of life. But they will be proud. They will be proud. Magiging proud si Jesus sa mga anak niya. Magpapatuloy kaming mainit na, na, those children who will continue to be, to be more, uh, passionate in serving Him. Jesus said, this is important. This is the most important part of, my, of, of the message today. Jesus said, I will never blot out the name of that person from the book of life, but will acknowledge that name before my father and his angel. How important is it that our names re- remain in the book of life? How important it, uh, is it for our names to remain in that book of life? Revelation chapter 20:15 he says there anyone whose name was not found written in the book of life was thrown into the lake of fire If you are not registered tuyo mo sa katabi mo registered ka na ba <laughs> And what is the book of life It is a book where the names of those who receive Jesus Christ are written The book of life will be opened at the white throne of judgment. If you, once you receive Jesus Christ, you don't have to work for it. You don't have to be a part of a church. You don't have to you know, be clean, clean of your sins because you cannot. You cannot clean your sin on your own. It is still there. It is when you receive Jesus Christ. Salvation is a free gift. It's a grace from God, a blessing that we do not deserve. We do not deserve Jesus Christ being crucified on, uh, on the cross. We do not deserve His blood drained out of His body to wash away our sin. He does not deserve that. He is the Son of God. But His love through His grace, blessing that we do not deserve. He gave up his life for us while we were still sinners. And that's when, if you receive, the Bible says, if you confess with your lips from your heart that Jesus is Lord, then you will be saved. Your names will be written in the Lamb's book of life. Amen? Because when you enter heaven, they will not ask you, what religion are you? What denomination are you? Come on, who's your pastor? Do you know your pastor? No. The name. Remember, how can your names be listed? Now, receive Jesus Christ. You, can, you, you, you don't have to do anything because Jesus Christ already have done it. He says, it is finished. Amen. It is finished. In his last breath, he was thinking of you. He was thinking of us. He says, Father, it is finished finished. I already paid for all of their sins. And when you receive Jesus, your names will be listed. Now what happens if our names are not written in the Lamb's book of life? Two things. If we will not accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, you are already prejudged. Why? Because your name is not listed. Make sense? See the logic, right? You can only, your name will be listed if you receive Jesus Christ. Accept Him as your Lord and Savior. Believe in Him that He's the Son of God. Just accept Him. And have a grateful heart, you know? Accept Him. Your names will be listed. But if you will not accept, then your names are not listed, right? And if you're not listed there, you are prejudged. You go to hell. Okay? Number two, if our names are blotted out, oh, blotted out or erased, oh no, from the Lamb's book of life. You see, that name there will not remain. It will be tested. It can be blotted out. And who will erase that, that, that your name there? It is not Jesus. It is God who will judge us. Amen. And how will you do that? 
No? In, the, in the book of Revelation, he says there, Listen, then I saw a great white throne. Like we call this the white throne judgment. The great white throne and him who was seated on it. The earth and the heavens fled from his presence. And there was no place for them. That means heaven and earth already is gone. There's no more sense of time, right? The, and I saw the dead, great and small, standing before the throne. And books were opened. Say it would be books. Lagyan yun ng S, Books. Books were opened. And another book was opened. There are two sets of books. One books and another book was opened, which is the book of life. The Lamb's book. The li- this is the, life, uh, the book of life. The Lamb's book of life, where our names are recorded. And then the, the dead were judged according to what they had done as recorded in the books. The sea gave up the dead that were in it, and death and hates gave up the dead that were in them. And each person was judged according to what they had done. Then death and hates were thrown into the lake of fire. The lake of fire is the second death. Anyone whose name was not found written in the book of life was, not, was thrown in the lake of fire. The books now will show proof that we received Jesus not by our lip service, but from the heart. Amen? These books, you know, in the book of Isaiah in chapter 1, it says, Come, let's reason together. Though your sins are as red as scarlet, I can turn them white as snow. He says, God says, I can erase your sin, no matter how red as scarlet it is. I can erase them. 700 years later, it happened. A child was born. A son was given to us, who is Jesus Christ, who uh, on, after his ministry was nailed on the cross, was nailed on the cross, and his blood washed away our sins. Amen. He washed away. He, 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 he washed away our sins. Remember this: before you have received Jesus Christ, you already have a story, right? Right. You have a story. And that story is written there in the white throne judgment. No? While you have not yet received Jesus Christ, this story will bring you to hell. But God loves us so much that he gave his only begotten son, Jesus. Therefore, if anyone be in Christ, he is a new creation. The past has gone and behold, the new has come. This past life of yours will be erased turn them white as snow and a new book will be open hello a new book when you, will be open that's when you have received the moment you have received Jesus Christ a new fresh book is given to you now this book all your life be, uh, when you receive Jesus Christ until you face the white throne judgment everything that you do will be recorded in that book so when you face the white throne judgment, you see, the white throne judgment, and your story is that you just received Jesus Christ one day and then you go back to Satan. Never changed. Never changed. Went back to sin. And then that book will be presented. And then you are there, you are nervous. You are nervous, you know why? Because you know the life that you lived. And you were hoping that your name will not be blotted out. And as your day, as your books are being opened, your names are slowly fading from the Lamb's book of life. Slowly fading. And then Jesus Christ will come, but Father, Father, I died for Him. I gave up my life for Him. And then Jesus Christ says, did he give your li- his life to you? No. This is the proof in the books. From the moment you have received Jesus Christ, what kind of stories have you been writing in, 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 in your book in heaven? What kind? It is not late. Too late. Amen. You can start all over again. Amen. Amen? You can start all over again. Start writing the best story that when the time comes, you will not be nervous 
to face the white throne judgment, but be confident. Be confident that your names will not be written in the Lamb's book of life. See, God loves us. Jesus loves us. But He is also a fair God. A God of wrath. He also, though not easily angered, He also gets angry. Amen. Tell your seatmate, protect your name in that book of life. Let's protect our names in that book of life. Amen. How do you do that? Simple. How do you do that? Simple. You know, first, read your Bible. Know first the heart of God. Fill your heart with the, with the word of God. If you feel, if, you're, if your heart is so filled with, with, with the word of God, no, no temptation can come in. In no sin can come in, no anxiety, no depression, no worry. You see, Sita who stood up here, stage four cancer. But his smile is better than your smile. His faith is stronger than your faith. You know why? Because every morning he sits at the feet of Jesus. Unlike Martha, who is busy. Preparing for everything. What do you do when you wake up? Who do you wake up for? What do you wake up for? When you wake up, what do you do? You know, you think about your job. You think about your business. And what to do the rest of the day. Come on. Sit first at the feet of Jesus. You'll never know. Things will happen to you in the course of the day. And that word that you will receive will help you. Get out of that mess. Amen? Amen? Fill your heart with the word of God. That's the first step. Amen? And be part of a family. Jesus Christ did not leave us orphans. Now if, you can t- if you remain to be just a member, just there sitting after the worship service, you go. Never wanted to be part of a life group. You're just a visitor. You know, you just go, go to church if you are comfortable or if you want it. No, you're not a part of the family. But we want you to be part of the fam- family. Amen? So wake up. The church in Sardis was living a comfortable life. They were so sure that everything was all right because they have put their guards down even though their city was fortified with high walls and is located at the top of a hill and seemingly difficult to attack they were defeated and conquered four times do not be deceived satan and his evil cohorts are working not only double time but over time relentlessly attacking christians using the weapons he can master satan wants us back Satan wants us back. Hold on to Christ. Jesus said, I know your deeds. You have a reputation of being alive, but you are dead. Wake up. Strengthen what remains and is about to die. For I found your deeds unfinished in the sight of God. This church, ACCI church family, will not, will not die, I tell you. If you will have my heart, this church will move on and will conquer many nations. This is what we are called for. Be a part of it. Don't just be a visitor there, a consumer of God's word. ACCI family, wake up. And we shall be one of those who have not sold their clothes. And assuredly, our names will will not be blotted out. Of the book of life. That is my desire. That is my desire. For all of us. For all our names will will remain. My task. Is to, 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 to preach the word. To pray for you. To love you. To show you God's love. But it is your task now. To respond. I cannot force you. Amen. Wake up. How do you wake up? I'm going to use. This acrostic, wake up. How do you wake up? Letter W, work for God and not for your religion, nor for anyone. Work for God, not for your religion, not for anyone else. 
or anything else. Work not for your blessing, but work for the blesser. Colossians 3 verse 23 to 24. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters. Since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward. It is the Lord Christ you are serving. Amen. From the moment you wake up, serve Jesus. From the moment you wake up, present yourself. Jesus, what do you want us to do? What do you want me to do? Letter A of, of wake, apply all your learnings from scriptures in your life. Not, do not just learn from it. Know it. Apply it in your life. James 1.22 Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Amen. That's why I pray every time you come and hear the message of God, I want God to put uh, uh, an ear stopper on your left, left, uh, left ear so that the words will not come in and go out there. <laughs> no? <laughs> the word of God will come in. You process it in your mind. Amen. And then you plant it in your heart. Let there K of, of awake, keep on clinging to the vine who is Jesus on all seasons of your life. All seasons, especially during good times. Amen? During the days of blessings. I am the true vine and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. While every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. Welcome testings and trials in your life. Do not run away from problems, you know. Face problems. Do not run away from it. Accept trials and testings. Because of that, you will have a testimony. Right? These trials, these testings. I always tell this. Without the test, your testimony will just be an imony. Right? Letter E of week, engage yourself to your church family. Engage yourself to your church family. Do not just be attenders. Be a part of your church family and watch each other's back. Are you excited every, every worship service? Are you excited to come here? If you're excited to come here, you will be here early. Ayan, nagsisihan na. <laughs> uh, yeah, you will be here early because you're so excited excited first to meet your, your brothers and sisters right just like you're excited to go home and have a vacation in your and see your look uh, and 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 be with your family be excited you know uh, anyway puppies you know this song that's worship you know. um, i i want to hear the message so 10 o'clock, I will be there. John 13, a new command I give you. Love one another. As I have loved you, 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 so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. If you want to just be a visitor, you are welcome. Because it is my joy to plant words into your, to, to plant the seeds of words in your heart. But I desire, I pray that you become part of our family. Amen. Let there you untangle yourself from the world. We are now aliens in this world. You know, we are no longer of this world. That's why your friends, you know, they leave you behind. Okay? They will not. Um, it's no longer the same. Good for you. Because they notice that you're no longer the same. Amen. We're no longer, we, we untangle yourself from the world. First Peter 2.9, but you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession. So you must have to be, you're special. You're God's special possession. That you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Amen? Letter P, prioritize God's work and everything will flow into your life. Matthew 6.33 Matthew 6.33 Ano nga? Matthew 
Matthew 6.33. But, all these things will be given to you. And he was talking about food on your table, clothes on your body, you know, how, home, house, all of these things that you need will be given to you. God even knows what you need more than you know. But if you seek Him and His righteousness, His kingdom, what is His kingdom? The kingdom of God is here. It's Jesus Christ, the plan of God, the mind of God, the heart of God, the salvation of humanity. Everything shall be given. Even your, even, do you know that even your, not only your needs, but even your wants will be given to you? The Bible says, delight yourself in the Lord and everything will be given to you. No? Uh, delight yourself in the Lord and He shall grant you the desires of your heart. Amen? Sabi mo sa katabi mo, delight yourself in the Lord, not on Instagram and TikTok. So prioritize. Let me challenge you with this. Today, Christians can fall into the trap that ensnared the church in Sardis. If we merely go through the motions of practicing our faith without really feeding our spirit, kain lang ng kain ng salita ng Diyos pero na natiling payat sa espiritu. Tinuwi mo payat sa espiritu. Yung ma-emote. Yung mga madaling-madaling ma-offend. Hmm. Yung mahirap, yung those who find it difficult to forgive. Come on. You were, give, you were forgiven freely. Why don't you be forgiven? Siya may kasalanan eh. Ask muna siya. We can avoid becoming the living dead by engaging in our faith through Bible study, prayer, fellowship, sincere obedience, and selfless service. Exhort everyone to be part of a life group. Not just a member, but be a part of a life group. Ang isang umaattend ng ACCI Family Worship Service who cannot commit to a life group remains to be a visitor of a family. You know? There are more benefits when you are part of a family than just merely a visitor, right? Now, can you commit your spiritual life to ACCI Family Care? Can you commit? We are committed. But we will not force you. But can you commit your life to ACCI Families Care? See, we are called. We are chosen. And listen. Inglisin nyo na lang to sa mga katabi nyo na hindi. Sa ACCI Family, biyahe natin dito sa mundo hanggang langit. Walang iwanan. Okay. Ngunit, paalala lang po. Reminder with love. Kadalasan, kayo ang nangiiwan. Di ba? Kayo ang nangiiwan. Sabi mo sa katabi mo, huwag kang mangiiwan. Nalipat ka lang sa, sa, sa malayo, hindi ka na umatin. Unlike our Madirakas, ha? layo pa niyan, di ba? Lapakan natin natin mga Madirakas, oh. ha? mga seniors natin, di ba? Layo niyan, malapit na sa sadya. Ha? Alnada. Imagine. Oh, yung mag-ina, nakita nyo, si Mar Mar Marie at si Nicole, taga-sardya yan, pero andi dito sila. Right? You see? Get out of your comfort zone and get in to Jesus' zone. Praise God. <laughs> Halata ba excited ako mag-preach? <laughs> but this is such a very important important no, uh, memory verse. Okay, can we all read them together?
Fix your eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of your faith.